Well, I come to my views about legal education from the perspective of having been uh, a student in a law school in Canada and the United States, having had appointments in law schools in Australia and Great Britain and Singapore, and having been the dean of two different Canadian law schools. And together those things have led me to believe that the uh, conventional model of legal education in North America is in sore need of change. Now I start from the premise that, uh, the twin premises, that first most of our students, the vast majority of our students come to law school because they at least want to begin their working lives uh, as a lawyer. And secondly, that the law is a service profession. So to answer the question, what should legal education look like in the future, I think we first have to ask ourselves the question, what will the legal profession look like in the future? And that, in turn, turns on the answer to a third question, uh, and that is, uh, what will the future demand for legal services be? And I think that what recent years have shown us uh, has been that the conventional model of the provision of legal services has seen lawyers be squeezed at both ends of the value chain. Uh, on one hand, we're seeing increased commodification of the provision of basic legal services, and I think it's just a matter of time before um, places like Walmart and Costco and so on get into the business of uh, doing things like basic wills and residential real estate transactions and so on. Um, at the other end, of course, we are seeing um, the impact of globalization. Well, that's an overused and hackneyed phrase, but, it, but it's something real. Uh, and, uh, and it's having an impact upon the way in which uh, law firms uh, are organizing themselves, and it's having an impact on the way in which uh, clients are uh, conceiving of their need for legal services. Um, together, uh, those two things, I think, have had an impact, uh, a profound impact, on the way in which uh, the way in which lawyers um, uh, behave. And what we've seen uh, in response to the recent economic crisis has been giants fall. We have seen major law firms fall apart and, and die. We've seen other lawyers, though, and other law firms uh, prosper. Uh, there are many firms that are doing better than they were um, four or five years ago. And those firms that are prospering, I think, are those which embody a, um, a, a, a spirit of entrepreneurialism uh, and, a, uh, and a commitment to, um, uh, to innovation in terms of the way in which they, the way in which they do things. So to me, uh, the question is really what law schools need to do to provide um, opportunities for lawyers who are going to be able to meet those, those needs in the, uh, in the future. And one thing I'd say is that, uh, is that the law school of the future has to be an active participant in the global scene. Now all of us are doing much more on the international front than any of us were doing uh, 20 or 30 years ago, but I still think it's the case that, um, that the international um, aspects of legal education exist at the margins, and they don't yet go to the core uh, of the way in which we, uh, we the way in which we teach law. Um, secondly, I think that we need to elevate the place of skills uh, in legal education. You know, the the party line in legal education is that we teach students to think like lawyers, but 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 we don't. What we do, and we do it quite well, is to teach our students to think in terms of problems. But lawyers, the good lawyers, the best lawyers think in terms of solutions. And what we don't do enough in law schools in North America is to teach our students uh, the art of, of solution-oriented uh, thinking, solution-oriented uh, analysis. And related to this, in my opinion, is that the best lawyers uh, are leaders. You know, when, a, when a client retains a lawyer, they're doing so partly because they want someone who can help lead them to a better uh, solution, a better situation. In other words, they are looking for leadership skills. Um, but that's not something that, it, in a systematic way at least, North American law schools teach. I think, too, uh, that we need to teach teamwork. Uh, the reality is that, that all of our students, whether they're in big firms or small, whether they're in private practice or public service, whether they're in the, in the, in the private sector or in the, in the NGO sector, all of our students are going to work in teams, uh, and that's a skill. 
uh, it's, it's a skill that can be learned, but it's not something that, in a systematic way, uh, at least, um, we, we teach. I think as well uh, that law school should be doing more uh, to teach students economics. Now, I know that that's a loaded term uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to law schools. But what I mean by it is, is this. Uh, when, when, when a lawyer gives legal advice, they are almost always inviting their client to engage in some sort of cost-benefit analysis. Yet that's not a skill that, that any of us teach in a systematic way. Uh, so I think that, that economic literacy is, uh, is something that, uh, that law school should be teaching. And finally, for now, um, and perhaps to circle back to where I began, I think that we need to teach our students cultural, li cultural liter literacy. Um, it's not to say that our job in North American law schools is to train lawyers for the People's Republic of China or for India or, or anywhere else, but I do think that we need to inculcate our students with the skills um, necessary to engage successfully um, and constructively with, uh, with people of different cultural backgrounds, many of whom live in our own countries, uh, of, of course. So that's what I mean when I talk about enhancing the place of skills education. I don't think it's the same thing as, uh, as clinics, I and mean, clinics have a place in law school, but in my view they're not a substitute for, for what I sometimes call transcendental skills, skills which are transferable across domains and, uh, and, uh, and across settings. Um, those are the kinds of lifelong skills that I think um, successful lawyers of the future are going to need. So to sum up, uh, at the moment, the, the, the conventional model of legal education that we were bequeathed uh, uh, from Dean Langdell uh, is that uh, substance should be the organizing principle of, uh, of legal education. Um, I think that in the future, substance needs a sibling, uh, and, that is, and that is skills. So in my view, um, that is the greatest challenge um, for law schools today, and that is how we can uh, integrate skills in our curriculum uh, in a way that prepares our students to meet the needs of the future, but that doesn't um, distract from the importance of teaching uh, our students um, legal principles.